What is up guys, welcome back. Today we're taking a look at a special request by Hyungjun. He asked if I could remake this awards-winning menu and I thought it looked quite good. So today we're making this in Next.js and Framer Motion. And if you have any special request, don't hesitate. I'd love to remake animations for you. And as always guys, if you wanna try out the animation for yourself, there is a link to the live demo and to the source code in the description below. So the first thing I did here was to create the Next.js application. I used the latest flag to use the latest version of Next.js and then I deleted everything inside of the page.js, page module CSS, and the global CSS. And with that, we have a nice blank application ready to work on the navbar. Now, since I'm working on a header, I'll be working inside of the root layout, and that way the layout will be shared among all pages. And so what I'm gonna do here is in the components folder, I will create a header component. And inside of that, I'm gonna have all the inner components of the header. And since I'm going to use SAS, I can install it here. And then inside of the layout.js here, I have all of the children, which are going to be all of the pages, and I can then have the header on top of everything here. And if I refresh the page, I now see that I have the header imported here. So the first thing I'll be working on here is the nav bar, which is the bar here. And then after that, I'll be working on the nav itself. All right, so here I've added some basic HTML and CSS for the nav bar. I've used a next link for my name, and then I have two main containers one for the menu and one for the shop. And then I've added a bit of styling. My name and the shop container are both in position absolute so that the menu container can be perfectly centered. And then I've put the header in position fixed with a width of 100% just so that it's always visible if we scroll. And then we should have something like this. There's a couple of things left. Uh, for example, the label here, the second one, I'm going to put it initially in opacity zero, and I'll change the opacity based on the state if the nav bar is active or not. And then I also need to work on the burger here. So what I like to do is use the pseudo elements, and I use that to create like the lines of the burger menu. And now we have a nice burger menu, and then I can add on the elements here, I'm gonna add a cursor pointer, and that's basically the shop container and the menu here. And then to make everything responsive, I'm gonna specify that the shop should be uh, in display none. And so now the shop here has disappeared and we have like a nice menu for mobile. And then I can add some media queries for like 600 pixels. And then just as a finishing touch here, I'm gonna add some gap um, on the shop container here, maybe like 30 pixels so that they are nicely spaced out. And that looks pretty good to me. So with that, we're ready to add some JavaScript, animate everything. For that, we're gonna use Framer Motion, so we can go ahead and install it here. And then I'm going to create an anim.js file. And here I'm going to create like a simple opacity animation. So nothing too complicated. And then I'm going to import the opacity here from the animation sheet. And then I can use the motion from Framer Motion. And I'm gonna put it in the elements that I want to animate the opacity. And then I can specify that the variance should be the opacity that we just described in the animation sheet. And then we can do, when should it be animated? And now to dictate the state of the animation, we're going to use the use state hook. And with that, we can kind of keep the state of the nav to see if it's active or not. And then I can use here, if it is active, then I want this animation for the menu to be closed. And if it's not active, I want it to be open. And then for the close label, it's going to be the other way around. And then I can just copy paste this and then I need to toggle the state. And if we test that, okay, now we have an error. Next.js is not happy. We need to specify that we are on the client since Next.js is server-side rendering. Okay, so the state here is not well set. If it is active, then we want it to be closed, else open. And then if we toggle it, we can see that our navbar is now working really fine. And then I'm just going to adjust the font size as well for the bigger screens, just so that it's a bit more visible when it's not mobile. And with that, we can now work on the actual nav, which is this part here. It's going to be split into three different components. We're gonna have the body, we're gonna have the footer, and then we're gonna have the image and all of it will be animated in different ways. So here I've created the base component for the nav and I've created its style sheet and I've imported the nav inside of the header. Now the nav always appears here, which is not really what we want. So what we can do for that is add conditional rendering and say, hey, is it active? And if it is, I want to return the nav. But now the nav is kind of popping in and out. We want to add like a nice animation to that. Same thing as we did with Framer Motion. I'm going to import motion from Framer Motion. And I'm also going to create another animation here, but it's going to be a height animation. And with that, we can now animate the height and we don't have to specify a value. Framer Motion is really smart for that. It's going to detect automatically and it's going to animate towards the height auto. And then I also have a specific transition here that's going to be used by multiple other animations so that the design and the animations are coherent. And I'm going to use the transition here 
on the open and closed. And now I've used open and closed for the opacity because they are based on the state. But instead here, I'm gonna have an enter and an exit because it's going to be an animation based on the mounting and the unmounting of the component. So as soon as the component mounts, it's going to take the enter animation that we've described in the anim.js. And then when the components unmount, it's gonna trigger the exit animation. And if we try this, now the problem is it's, it's leaving directly, so it's not giving it time to trigger the exit animation. So to fix the exit animation, we're gonna go here and import the animate presence module from Framer Motion, and we're gonna wrap the nav with it. And then we can do a mode equal weight. And with that, we can see that the nav is unmounting only after its exit animation. And now we have a couple of styling problems. So we can easily fix that by adding first here a class name. And I'm gonna add it and call it nav. And then we can add a wrapper that's gonna wrap everything. And I'm gonna put the content inside of the wrapper here. We can see that the glitch, we don't have a glitch anymore. We only have the overflow problem. And with that, we can simply add an overflow on the nav. And here I've created the body component with an index and a style sheet, and I've imported the body inside of the nav. And so it looks like this now, we have the body instead of like the weird content that we had before. And then we have the footer here, and then we have the image, and those two other components will be created later. And for now, we're gonna start with the body. So for the body, I've created an array of links with a title, a target route, and a source, and return the link with a title inside of it. And then I've added a bit of styling just to make everything look good. And we have something like this, and then I can add some more styling just to add a bit of responsiveness. And then one last thing I just realized is the burger menu here is always staying the same, and we can actually add a little animation on it. So to do that here, I'm going to add another styling. So it's going to always have the styles burger, but I'm going to add an additional one and check if it is active. I will also add a styles.burger active and else nothing. When the burger is active, I'm going to target the after and the before, and I can change the top position. And I'm also going to add a transform. One should be minus 45. And yep, that looks pretty good. And now we need the transition. So this is the cubic bezier that I want. Transition all one second, and the cubic bezier is the one I defined here. And now we have a nice animation on the burger menu as well. And with that, we're going to work on the animation on the text here. There's kind of like a, I don't know how to call this, but like a wave animation. So the concept for this animation here is instead of returning a title, I'm going to return every single character of the title inside of a span, and then I can animate those span individually. So here I basically have the same result that I had before, but instead the title here is split into characters. I need to add a key here to the span just so that React can recognize the elements. And then I'm going to add a motion here on the span and I'm going to create an animation here with initially the top will be at 100%. Once it's open, the top will be at zero. And then once it's closed, the top will be at 100%. And then I'm going to add the same transition that I had for the height animation, but I'm going to modify it. I'm going to add a delay of like 0.2, which is just the value that I have for now. We're going to change that later. And I can save that. And then I can go back on the body here. And so here I've integrated the animation. Okay, it doesn't look to be working. We're going to change the top value here and put Y instead. And then we can add a display flex. And that should solve the problem. Let's try this. Now we can see that it's getting animated, but we don't have like that nice appearance effect because we need to add an overflow hidden. And with that, we have a nice appearance. But if you take a look at this, we can see that it's like letter by letter. And so we can basically fix that by adding a custom number and we can do the index multiplied by 0 0.02. And then the delay here is going to be the index that we passed. You can see that it's now appearing one by one. And I'm also gonna add like an opacity here. This is looking pretty good. One thing that's missing is now the exit animation. If we use the same value that we passed, I believe it's not gonna work. As you can see, the index is like on the other side. It's like the wrong way. If we look at the demo here, we can see that it's like reversing. So instead of returning a simple value, we're gonna return an array. And so the first value will be the enter and the second value will be the exit. And so what we can do is get the length of the word and multiply it by the current index, multiply that by 0.01. And so we can target for the enter 
the first one and for the exit the second one and if we try this this is looking pretty good we have a nice enter and exit animation now the exit here is taking a bit too much time in my opinion i'm going to change duration to like 0.7 here and this is looking much better all right so the menu is starting to look pretty good now what i want to work on is the blur effect and the image they're both quite linked the same way and to make that we're going to need to refactor uh, a little bit the first thing we want to do here in the body is we want to take the links and put them outside of the body and we're going to put them directly inside of the nav here uh, because the image here basically needs to have access to the data and so we can't have it inside of the body but we can just pass here the links to the body and then we can go in the body here and we can have the links as props and here i'm creating a state to track which title is actually hovered and if one is hovered at all so here's the state for the selected link there's a first value to know if it is active and then there's a second value to know which link is selected so here in the body i've passed the selected link and the set selected function to the body so i can come here and do the selected link here and then on the link i can add a on mouse over and on mouse leave and so here on mouse over i set the selected link to be the current index and i put the is active to true and then once the mouse leave i set the selected index to be the active index and is active to false and with that i can now create the blur animation so here it is you kind of understand the drift now initially we're going to set a filter with a blur zero pixel and then once it's active we're going to set the blur to four pixels with a certain opacity and when it's not active i'm going to reset it back to the initial values so here i've added the motion for every single link basically if the selected link is active and the link is not the one that's being hovered then we want to blur it else we don't want to blur it and if we try this we can see that this is working really nice and we also have a nice state that we can use for the image component so here we have the image component you kind of understand what's going on now we have the image folder here with the index and the styling and now i can go in the nav here and i can basically render the image component i'm going to import it i'm going to give a source to the image which is going to be from the links array here so i can do links oops, links of the selected link dot index and then I'm targeting the source and then I can also see if it is active based on the selected link if it is active and then I can go in the image component here and I have here the source and if it is active and here I've created the image component I use the same opacity animation that I created before and I animate the image depending on if it's active and then I've imported the next image which I've put in display none for small screens and if the screen is bigger than a thousand pixels then I show it I give a certain width and a certain height in mobile we have nothing here and if we have a screen larger than a thousand pixels we now have the image here with a nice animation but it's not placed properly and that i believe we need to go here on the nav and change the wrapper here to be in display flex and now the image is placed on the right and then we have two more elements that we need to add one is the footer and one is the background which are like the two easiest to add so that's really good we can go ahead and do this very quickly so for the footer we're going to use the same principle as the links but instead of being anchors we're going to use ul and le's and then we're using the same animation that we created before the translate and we're just changing the custom values to have different delays for the enter and exit animation and here's the result and if we look at the animation we can see that we have the same principle as the links but instead of being letters by letters it's actually the full text that's being hidden and it looks pretty good uh, there's one thing that i forgot here is um, i'm gonna actually put text transform uppercase and that looks much better and now we can look at the last element which is the background so it's like a background that's black but with an opacity of 0.5 and we're using like a height animation i go into roots of the header and i just add a simple div with some styling i tell the background to take the full width and have a position absolute and then i go in the animation file and i create a new background animation that's going to animate the height towards 100 viewport height and then i can just check if the nav is active then i want to open the animation and else i want to close it and with that i have a very nice little animation here with the background and things are looking pretty good we basically have the whole menu finished we can add a final little touch like right now it's just an example but in a real world website those links would lead to other pages 
And right now, if I click, like it just brings to a, a 404. And that's because all of those pages in the links actually don't exist. So here I'm creating all of the pages with a folder that has the name of the route and a file called page.jsx as the root of the page. Okay, so here I've added the page. You can try this. If I click on shop, now it leads to the shop, leads to the about page, leads to the lookbook page. The menu is kind of staying open, which is which is not really what we want. We would like it to close when we change the route, right? So what we can do, we can easily do that with Next13. We can actually go here in the header and we're gonna import a hook called the use path name from next link. And then we can also use the use effect hook. And inside of that use effect, we'll check a const called path name. And we're gonna initialize it with the use path name hook. And here we can basically, every time the path name changes, we can do something here. And what we can do here very easily is set is active to false. Okay, it's not from next link, it's from next navigation. And we can actually try it out. If we go to the shop, it changes. If we go to the home, it closes the menu. And with that, we officially have completed this tutorial. I hope you liked it. I hope you learned something. Please leave a like, subscribe. It helps me a lot. And I'll see you in the next one.